Hey, kitty girls, it is Sunday, February 12th, 2023. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, season 15, episode number two. Yes. And for those of you that don't know who we are, hi, welcome to the show. My name's Gary, with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone, it's Damon. Welcome to the show. And uh, we're going to be discussing the most recent three episodes of the regular season 15, that's episodes five, six, and seven, which happen to be House of Fashion, Old Friends Gold, and Daytona Wins 2. Ooh. Uh, and before we get into that, though, we have some of this. <laughs> oh! That's right, children. We got some feedback on COLDR. Uh, so yeah. regarding our first episode, Payson R. Harris said, interesting thing about the destroyed clothes from the opening challenge. In Drag Race Canada, they actually had the queens cut up their entrance looks. Oh. Considering how much queens are paying for their looks now, dot, dot, dot. Mm-hmm. Child, like... What we were discussing was they recreated the first two episodes of the very, like, you know, uh, early seasons. So mm -hmm. it was the car wash challenge. They turned all the, the water. Yeah, they changed the cannon into the, you know, the motorcycle, but it was the wind effect thing. And so, you know, we had discussed about this that, you know, like a Malaysia baby doll, baby doll fox, like, spent mm -hmm. some coin on that look and then, like, was just getting hosed down. And I was like, right. That ain't going to come back. Um, <laughs> I mean, you would, I don't, you know what? I don't know. And I cannot imagine if, if you like walked into the, the room and had that happen, like, what do you, what are you going to do? Like, yeah, they can dry it out, but if it had anything that would have like, I'm pretty sure it was rhinestone if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, other girls, you know, anything like that, if it, you know, that's going to probably loosen some things because there's a glue or, you know, however they'd like kind of push those on. I was know. thinking more about the ostrich feather. Like, well, that too. That, stuff. Yeah. Like that. Those kind of things. Yeah. Th that's sort of just now ruined. Although there's a part of me that's like, well, 100, they're 200K on the line. Like, so your your mentality is probably like, baby, I'll do whatever I have to. Like, you know, smear True. pudding on it. Like, you know, because like, I'll just, you know, get another mate or whatever. Is that, you know, your hope is that you, <laughs> you know, you're going to recoup the cost of the, 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 the drobe wardrobe that right. you sent so but Payson's point is well taken since we we you and i uh <laughs> obviously have not seen drag race canada to know that they had them do that but that goes back to like some of the most reputable you know well-known queens what like shea coulee only spent like i don't know like two thousand like like Something a like very that. very yeah. small amount right because she was like no like and plus she kind of made her stuff and I was like that's sort of the key like you can mm -hmm. go to designers and you have some fabulous stuff made but I'm like that makes sense maybe for the final runway like mm -hmm. that makes sense for some specific things but for your entrance look and you don't know what the hell's happening in the first week or the first two weeks like Just make like I can understand the aesthetic and we've learned and we've talked about this before that drag race is getting expensive because mm -hmm. it's more well known and you want that like the fashion you want those kind of looks that will make people go wow and i know i'm sure these queens have spent lots of money whether they they're made it themselves or not right um the hope is is obvious is to like recoup that but it does kind of suck that you would have to go through stuff beyond your outside of your control like that you walk in right i mean there's the classic like season five where they they dunked them in water like a dunk tank basically and it is funny because detox talked about that recently in an interview i think with jinx monsoon and said she had no problem with jumping in a dunk tank but that's because the bitch was wearing latex like right or like vinyl i think she was like you know so like she wasn't worried about what happened to the outfit and that's why she looks right. so fabulous in one because she was just like she's like doink let me <laughs> like, let me jump in and pose and this is already fucking wet as it is you know right, 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 right. sweating bullets inside it but 
Yeah. Well, thank you for the feedback. Uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting, you know, when uh, Payson was like, just so you know, like, <laughs> this is not the worst they've ever done the girls. Like, they've actually made them cut their, uh, their that outfits. Looks, that is a thing. That can suck. But that's where I'm like, but see, that goes back to my, my comment is, like, the intelligence is, like, don't be wearing shit with Swarovski crystals, you dumb bitch. Like, wait, save that for the fin- final part of the runway. Yeah. I get that you don't know how far you're going to go, but, like, there's a time and a place. And right. like, and be ready if, especially if you borrowed something that you may have to pay to replace it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, don't borrow it. Right. So I think certain people in the current real world have learned that lesson. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Kim K and the uh, Marilyn Monroe dress. Oh, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she should have never borrowed it. But anyways, it's, mm-hmm. that <laughs> I'm like, you weren't the same shape. This none of, this doesn't relevantly make any sense. And I'm speaking out of turn because I don't know much about it other than what little I heard after the fact that came right. out. And I was yeah. like, oh, oh, okay, whatever. <sighs> so there's that. Yeah. You ready to jump in and, and get things Let's going? Do it. Okay. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. So it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Uh, these are our overall thoughts, and they kind of fall into three categories. We've got serves, which is the good stuff. We got swerves, which is like road hazard shit, baby. You got to go around that. And uh, nerves, which theoretically could be really good or not really good. Uh, right. Like, girl, you got some nerve or, ooh, girl, you got damn you really got some nerve like like that's that's Mm -hmm. that's insulting to the senses so uh with that being said why don't we jump into uh what we got for serves damon who you who you giving up a serve for or serves to i should say sure so i am going to give serves to a couple of things um we got our reading reading challenge Mm -hmm. um a little early so i was a little surprised by the number of queens that they were having to read. I doubt we got everything because time constraints and editing. Right. But I give props to Lucy for her reading because I was not expecting that. Lucy seems so sweet. Uh... Sometimes. We'll get... (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> but like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> anyway if you saw the like, last untucked you know right <laughs> that part yes thank you but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so the 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 i got this like lucy seems really nice in general like the way she's in the workroom and stuff like that. And I love her, the way she, you know, proportionized her body and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was not expecting it. And I, I, I saw why she won. It was very like right there on the dot. It was a read. It was a read, honey. It was a read. And I loved it. Um, So all props to her mama for that. And then I just have to, give all honor and praise to Miss Sasha Kobe. Mm-hmm. I am loving her this season. There's no really one specific thing that I could just like pinpoint and be like all like that. Well, actually I will. Her tie dye runway look. The latex tie dye runway look mm-hmm. in the traditional like psychedelic multicolored print that was a bodysuit full bodysuit well yeah it went over the head she had a hat um you know dripping kind of things like cutouts and there was a corset and there was matching shoes and there was matching nails and there was matching makeup like honey turned it out and I was living. I, mm. I, what I've loved and learned so much about Sasha so far is she knows how to 
put her work, you know, she knows what works for her body. Mm-hmm. She also can sell a garment. Mm-hmm. And I feel of any queens on this show, I think she is the one that has come in the most like, I got this prepared. Like, yes, I have, I have yet to see a major like flaw yet. Now, my hope is that there is some kind of like, you know, imperfections because that makes good story and that's what the producers want. Yada, yada, yada. But so far, I just, I've, I've been in awe of Sasha this whole time. Mm-hmm. And I will have some comments later about that. I, I think she's done her homework um, mm-hmm. on every front. Right. Uh, and I guess I'll say it now because it's not going to come up anywhere else. Um, she knows people who have done the show before mm-hmm. and recently. And I guarantee they spilled all the tea. Right. And talked about what film production of this reality competition is like. Because right. I have caught on that she is not the most talkative. Mm-hmm. So she says what she needs to say when she wants to say it. And otherwise, she don't say nothing. Because if you don't say it, they don't record it, they can't use it. <laughs> Uh, on the nose, right? On the nose. Yes. There's there's that. Yeah, she uh she she definitely um she she says some things. Uh-huh. But uh so that being said, um so for me I had uh serves as well. It's interesting. Um I'm going to start with the Fashion House Maxi Challenge. Mhm. I honestly liked this for the first time Ever in the entire like pantheon of the US based series, I think I've enjoyed a fashion like design challenge because right. they gave them very specific parameters. So mm-hmm. you got grouped and then you had to theme based off of your fashion house and they gave you the materials. Granted, some people got, as usual, better materials than others, but. I just I, I appreciated the cohesiveness that like they had to sort of work together as teams to establish looks. And you can tell where I feel like some of them supported each other a little better than some others did. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were very like concise, conceptual like items. And that's what I very much appreciated about it. And I just I just think it made for a great episode. Um, in comparison to the other like design challenge uh, episodes of, of series past. Right. I agree. I think it was a really good challenge. Um, I did like the. Um, I agree. I just I like I liked it more than I liked most of like the bag, the balls where they like. Right. They have to do like random shit with random shit. And this kind of felt. While there was some randomness to things, Mm -hmm. this was all kind of, to be blunt, this was all mostly fabric of some kind. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though they weren't the best of leathers. um, Yeah. Yeah, because I was rewatching Fashion Photo Review again, and and that was the one thing about the House of Carson, uh, the House of Cressley, I guess, that I didn't care for was that the pleathers that they mm-hmm. were using no one to my knowledge from what I could catch really lined them. And that was kind of annoying me. Like I get that, like you only have so much time and blah, blah, blah. But I was like, it's quite obvious. It's a very specific fabric. The least you could do was try to like put something on the inside mm-hmm. to kind of hide the backing of, right. of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, so uh, serve for that. And I really have to give a serve to uh, Lucy Laduca's runway in the um i can't remember what they titled it but it was the puff jacket inspired puffa please yeah um her stay puffed marshmallow woman 
like inspired concept. I got it instantly. The moment she turned the corner, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Hi, nostalgia, bitch. I see you calling out <laughs> 80s kids and Ghostbusters. Like totally, totally got it. I was surprised to see on on social media and some things that there were some mixed reactions about like they felt like the jacket was the only thing that really sold it. Otherwise, she just kind of looked like she was wearing a sailor outfit. And I'm like, uh yeah, but the point is the jacket goes with it. Like, that is a part of right. the aesthetic of the whole look. Like, I, I don't know. I was just a little confused about that. So I just wanted to recognize, right. like, I thought that was well executed. Yeah. And I'll say this. If they had been, like, again, I can't really, I am only looked at this episode. I only watched this episode once. I had a very busy weekend. Right. But um, to me, it looked like, and I could be wrong, they were the same fabric. Like this wasn't like I bought oh a, yeah 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 I bought it like a a white you know full length puffer jacket which I don't even know if you could get and then like designed this element this like sailor suit out of it you know mm. or not out of it but to right. match right. it it looks like this was made together to make a cohesive look right which um, was a criticism of some of the other items that people had was that like the fabrics weren't quite matching which it is it is really difficult like on that stage one of the criticisms this season has been that the lighting is f- oh, i can say this is fucking with people because of their tights and their nude illusions not matching their skin tones right looking at you mama Roo. and like <laughs> what what D- this no i'm i'm just gonna call it out thank you sorry that was a choice. <laughs> so if you go back and you watch the most recent episode and you watch Rue and she comes out and walks down the runway, that new panel illusion on her abs is an absolute travesty. It does not match her skin tone whatsoever. And it's not even like, oh, girl, you look a little ashy. It's like, no, it's just not the right skin tone. But then when she's standing there to camera – and it's not when she's walking, but when she's standing to camera and she starts talking to the judges, magically the little panel over her abdomen, that little diamond kind of shape or whatever, it looks right. So that's lighting. That's that's an effect. Like, that's a known thing. And I'm like, I am shocked to see that that actually went out in through production, making Ru- Mama Ru look that bad. But I was mm-hmm. like, it just goes to show everyone is right to bitch about how – things aren't looking right on the stage and the colors aren't playing out, which the colors has always been a thing for a number of years. We know like the the color filters are just screwing everything up. Yeah. So I will indicate this and it's something I'm kind of looking at as I've I've got a picture from, it's a steal of the judges um, from this actually most recent episode. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of purple in this, you know, runway or in the, in the lighting right now from what I can see, not so much from above, but like, on the stage, what have you. So, hello everyone. Welcome to a little bit of color theory that I know about. Complementary colors. So, complementary colors is basically the opposite of a, of the color wheel. Um, and those things will usually kind of cancel each other out. Mm-hmm. If you want something to stay warm, you, you, are you if you want it to not stay warm, you put a complementary cool color on it. So, in this case, I'm using purple and yellow. Purple and yellow are kind of those complementary colors. So that's going to take a lot of ways. Skin, if your skin is golden, your undertone is kind of yellow, which means if you have purple lighting, it's going to look gray Mm. because they're going to cancel each other out. So that's what I feel is happening in this sometimes in this situation. But again, there's also we've learned about this over the years because we've been doing this for a while. Hi. Um, there's lighting for a stage at a bar. Mm-hmm. And then there's lighting for a big stage at, a, at an event. And then there's this kind of lighting, which is a kind of a mix of the two. It's a right. lot of runway lighting. It's it's a lot of lighting kind of going down a long way. So you're going to have to – You can, most people don't think of that when they're designing things. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think this is coming in. This These are the things that are coming into effect and we're learning over the years as being problematic because you don't necessarily know how this works. And – Again, since it's a production, 
they should be able to adjust lighting for each person, but they probably don't. They probably just keep it set at a certain level for everybody, and you're kind of like thrown into it, and right. we'll see what we get. Well, and I think that is one of the relative differences. I get the impression that there are things that happen in all-star seasons that don't happen in regular seasons. True. And that's because the queens have been through this before. As a contestant, they're like, no, mama, you are not, you're not playing me that way again. I already know how this goes, so light me right. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. wanting Mama Ru lighting, but I want, like, better than nothing. And look at what happened, like, the the Queen of All Queens, like, All-Stars competition, where right. they did the lighting up of, of the runway thing. And Raja shows up in this, like, red laser cage number that nobody knows what the fuck to do or how to film it. And so they, like, had to, like, do this whole other production thing just to get that to show up because they didn't realize that someone was going to do that. Yeah. Because Raja is that queen. Um right. <laughs> that being <Yeah>. said, <laughs> let's move on to to swerves. Yeah. <laughs> Damon, who? You, oh boy, who are you <laughs> swerves for? So I gave two. One's kind of funny, but one's and one's kind of serious. But I'll start with mm. the funny one. And it's spice and the act. Mm. And I have a real. I just have a real big problem. They called it out this last episode. And I'm so glad they did. And I'm so glad that they they mentioned that she kind of does the same walk every time. And there's and I'm gonna counter it a little, a little bit. Michelle said she's bored, but I want you to think back on other queens that have very familiar, very similar walks every time. And I'm gonna point out Simone. Simone had a very wonderful, for the most part, and very consistent, confident runway walk. And it worked. But that's the, the dis- difference. Yeah, yeah, I was getting there. <laughs> the difference is there's confidence and then there's an act. And that's where this is where, where this is kind of falling. Right. This is very much again, I understand the spice, sugar and spice, like drag aesthetic, they're they're dolls, they're brass dolls. They're kind of doing this whole kind of like cheeky fun thing. And it's cute, it's funny, it's very TikToky, but it is not runway worthy. It's cute right. once or twice, but we're now in episode seven by this point. Mm-hmm. We need to switch it up. Yeah. And the main reason I'm I'm calling this out for her in, specific, in particular, I need you to stop wearing those shoes. The big platform, tall, like shoe. Because one, I don't think y'all can really walk in those, personally. Um, and two, I think that's affecting what you do. Well, it, I mean, to be fair, I think what we're seeing is that they, they just haven't been live performer entertainers. Mm-hmm. They've right. they've been in a digital media that they can edit, that they can manipulate, and you know they're they're in house they're in a house they're in a hallway they're in a bedroom they're like you know right. they're they're in a very limited space so to be up on a stage and to move around and all these kind of things is a new arena for them and so I don't know I'm very curious to see if she can if she can no offense pull it out her ass and like learn mm-hmm. how to walk um, right. I don't know if she has any other shoes so I, I'm kind of doubtful on that. Yeah. Uh, I find it interesting that she's like, you know, I got to drop this, you know, thing mm-hmm. that Sugar and I started. And it's like, OK, we'll see if you can. I kind of think yeah. you can't because I think you don't know how to do anything else. And I right. don't know if anyone's going to come to your rescue at this point in the show because we're narrowing right. up on the halfway point. If anyone's going to be right. willing to, like, teach you. Right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, that's how I feel about this moment because I don't know. If there, if someone's going to have enough time and energy to like, please let me let me show you how to fucking walk because right. you don't know what you're doing. So my other thing is um, mistresses fun. So if you saw this episode, no, mm-hmm. no, let's go back. We'll go back to episode six, six with yeah. the with the with the challenge and the metal gate, which I think did I. Say I was gonna do that. Hold on. Before I say this shit now, I don't think I mentioned it later. No, that's right. I changed it. Okay. Um. I think this was gonna be my. I was gonna say Metal Gate was kind of my um, 
or Sarah would admit it. Mm. But during last week, they had the whole Metal Gate. Yeah. And there was the whole, like, we're holding on to this, you know, blah, blah, blah kind of moment. And you, the other team can't have it because of whatever reason. There wasn't a reason given. There wasn't any conversation happening. There was just, we're going to take it, and that's it, blah, blah, blah. Right. A, co- a conversation was had in Untucked with with Malaysia and Lux, who were, and, Ms., and Marsha, um, about this whole situation. And Malaysia was understandably upset. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little more, maybe playing to camera. We don't know. Uh-huh. Um, but this, the start of episode seven, mistress chimes in. And one of the things mistress said was that she was having fun and she thought that the fun was happening with the other side that we were kind of like, it wasn't a real fight. It wasn't a, a big a deal because I'm not, cause it's, it's not as big a deal. Wrong mistress. It is a big deal because this is $200,000. This is a challenge and this is something and no one was giving in. Everyone was kind of going back and forth. And yes, there was there stuff giving being given back. Yeah. But as Mr. Not mistress Malaysia said, there's too many fucking M's Um, as Malaysia was saying, they only gave back because they were getting, she used the word bully. I don't necessarily like that being the word here, but there was a, a, antagonistic in this side. It was not fun. And if you thought it was fun, fun is when everyone is in on the joke. Fun is when everyone is in on it and everyone's okay with it and everyone's having, you know, er, ha, 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 ha. yeah, mm-hmm. that's when it's fun. This did not feel like fun. Correct. This felt like a fight. Mm-hmm. And my main issue with it overall was mistress. Because you thought it was fun. And you thought we were just, oh, we're just gonna, we're just kind of, you know, it's the girls, how they do it in the in the in the in the pageants and whatever. But I don't think Malaysia did. And that's why it's not fun. Malaysia was taking it seriously. Malaysia wanted Malaysia and her team, and I'll put Sasha in that too, were like we we wanted this as well. And the clapbacks were not really clapbacks. They were we're taking it. And you're just gonna have to get used to whatever's left. Mm-hmm. There was no like fun to it there was no funny to it right at least what we got in the edit right um it was very much a us versus you Mm -hmm. are us and we're getting this we're taking this we're taking metal and you cannot say or do anything that will change that that's what it sounded like Mm -hmm. and sasha asked the perfect fucking question that no one answered, which is like, well, why do you think you get to take it? Oh, just because you claimed it? Well, that's not how this is going to work. Mm-hmm. There's three groups here. Yes, one kind of, you know, like, we're going to take this one and stood back and ate the popcorn. And then we're kind of at the stalemate. And no one was taking the time to figure out how to resolve it. It became, we're going to take it because we want it. And the other group being like, why? Right. No, I hear you on that. I have more to say, but I'll save it for later. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was sort of my feeling on it all. I I I I just it I, it wasn't fun, and that's sort of the problem I had with it overall. And I I'm happy that they've squashed it for you know to be blunt for the sake of production and, and getting it, you know, over so that they can, we can move on to something next week. But, um, 
I don't think it was as resolved as we, it should have been or mm-hmm. could have been. Right. What about you? Uh, in terms of swerves, okay, so for the first one goes to... Oh, glory. <laughs> Marsha times three. And I like saying it that way because that's how Bianca Del Rio refers to her. Uh, Marsha times three. I call it tie dumb. Not tie dye, tie dumb. We <laughs> all have choices. Some of us make the wrong ones. Girl. Right. Right. You should have been given the boot. Why they saved your ass, I don't know. There are times when when things are okay, and there are times when things are not okay, and this is one of those times I feel it was not okay. You did not do whatever the expectation was. You looked boo-boo to fool on the runway compared to all the rest of the contestants. Right. And I was like, and I kept thinking, like, am I not seeing it? Like, are the red blood drops tie-dyed and I'm just not sensing that? So if you, like, again, maybe the lighting, I don't know. There are moments when I when they got really close up. Again, really close up. And you could see, like, variation in the color of the fabric in the red. Mm. But it is not enough of a variation. Right. As as Raja said, where is the fantasy? Right. There, is, there is no fantasy here. So, yeah, it mm. was – to me, that was a huge swerve. It was just bad. Just bad, yeah. bad, it, it, bad. I understood the reference because I know the Brady Bunch and I get that's your whole aesthetic. But why are we bringing back what we walked in on? Just a different interpretation of it. No, she didn't bring it back. It was just trash. But no, 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 no. The reference to, like, her nose getting hit, like, her entrance Mm -hmm, look mm -hmm. referenced that with the -hmm. the bandage and shit on her face. Only now later we have a dress that apparently was what was worn when the incident happened. Like, it was so, like, I was like, okay, like, you wanted to wear this. It's obvious. You wanted to wear this. That's yeah. nice. You yeah. you made you made the stretch of imagination to believe that this would fill the challenge of the runway category. That's yeah. what you believe yeah. would be. This was your fantasy, as it were, that somehow this would be overlooked. And it wasn't. Yeah. No, it it was... needed more. I I would have been fine with it. If there had been more to it, Mm. we know blood is a mix of blue and red. It's red when it gets oxidized. Hello, science class. Hi. Uh, um, So if you had kind of really done that, like blue and red, like contrast with this, like, and made it very obvious that these were tie dyed. Mm. And then Jim and I talked about this. The whole like bottom half of the skirt, just those like red or red and blue colors to emphasize the tie dye effect and color, you know, moment. Because the fact that the dress was mostly white was enough for me to be like, no. Yeah. It was just it was just bad. Um, I'm also going to give a swerve to mistress for what I call the puffer diaper. I'm just going to call it out. How the fuck she won, I don't know. I think that was production, like, sticking their hand in the fucking nookie jar on this shit. And I'm and this was the first time this season where I was like, no, that is, a, that is a boot. Like, the moment she came around the corner, she started walking, I was like, oh, she in the bottom. What the fuck is this shit? I was right. like, there is gappage on the sides. Like, if there is anything you do as a big girl... You make sure your shit fits, and this don't fit. It no. is it is problematic in so no. many ways. It was it was ugly. I'm sorry. It yeah, was I, ugly. It, it was it, it was, was not. And this is what cracks me up is Selena as titties got criticized for her runway look in the fashion house. So she's in the house of, of Cressley, and she has, like, the comforter with the pockets and mm-hmm. does this thing. And I will admit, when she first stepped out, I was like, oh, dear. Mm-hmm. But then she so like, but right. But then she unzips it and it becomes this whole other thing. And it's a train. And I was like, I actually like what she put together. So 
I was like, fuck y'all judges. Like, I think you're wrong on this. And then in this case, I'm going to say it again. Fuck y'all judges. Like, I think you're wrong in this case. Like, I don't think yeah. mistress deserved to win, let alone like that, that outfit did not redeem or elevate her from her performance in the sitcom, like type group challenge thing. I was right. like, no, I, I was like, no, 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 no. I did not like this look at all. I we've talked about this before, and I know you have strong opinions about chaps. I do as well. They were awful. They were ill fitting. I did not understand the bell bottom at the bottom. Chaps don't bell. They are meant to be over like clothing. So no. Um, I 100% agree. It was a fucking diaper on the bottom there. Um, that was not fitting well and did not look good on her. And then you kind of had this top that looked like shit. And then you had a puffer hat on top, which looked like shit. Yeah, the bucket uh, hat was not a good look. A bucket hat, we've learned this season, is not a look. Girls, no. just stop it. Stop it right now. No one is Gilligan. Knock it off. Like, just no just nope. no more like, to the bucket hat. My biggest issue with fucking buckets hats is y'all are drag queens and you're wearing big-ass fucking hair. Don't do this combination. Puffer hats and big hair do not work right they just it just don't yeah Mm -mm. so yeah so that was that was a big old swerve um so that being said let's move on to to nerve who who you give a nerve to i see what you wrote i think you need to explain the first one but i know you sure 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 sure. oh it's just it it, it's nerve to sasha colby and oh child please (laughs) okay I don't think I need to say anything else. That's, it just, that's fair. I just, I that's fair. love that line and the way it came out and just, yes, click, 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 check, 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 number one. And then my other swerve or nerve to is to the shocking surprise guest in the, um, this most recent, you know, um, challenge, which is, Mr. Daddy, Big Daddy himself, Danny Trejo. I was not expecting it. Mm-mm. Was not expecting it. It hit me. And when we find out who it is and what happened, I was, I, it, 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 it shook me. So kudos to um, whoever made that happen. I loved the... Um, like we got like some extra little clips at the, the end, yeah. Outtakes, uh, and my favorite one of all was his Miss Vanjie and him walking out the door. <laughs> like <laughs> this is this is the shit. This is why Rue does the show because it's stupid, like right. so stupid that Danny Trejo shows up and he is Big Daddy. Now I will say this: Do y'all know why he's nicknamed Big Daddy? Because rumor has it Danny Trejo is blessed. <laughs> and I ain't lying about this. It is mm. rumor that he is related to the equine of the mammals. <laughs> so the fact that he was given the character Big Daddy was not lost on me. I was like, oh, I see oh. what y'all did there. I see what you did there. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was that was a that was that was a very pleasant surprise. Yeah. So props to that. Um, for me, uh, you already mentioned it. I got to give nerve for Sasha tied at her latex number. So here's the thing, children, you need to pay attention to. Not only does Sasha have the right to serve body, yaddy, yaddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she borrowed the latex number. I don't know for certain if she actually owns it, but it mm. don't matter because she fit it. Like this is a proper fitting outfit. And what sent it over the top for me is the latex corset that is perfectly matched to the pattern of the body suit. So much so, you can't clock that shit if you're not paying attention in a 60 fucking minute episode because the runway's so goddamn fast. And I was like, it took like five attempts for me to catch. I'm like, bitch is wearing a corset that is laced up the back and it is an exact pattern match to the tie-dye swirl. Yes. I was like, 
fucking crown her. Just fucking crown right? her. Right. Just right. fucking crown her. Right. But like, she can't I, win every week. So God forbid. I, I hate to be so loud, but that's how I fucking feel. I feel like that was just, and like the corset, like just like matching, ev- like it, everything. Like it, ugh, so cohesive. You don't, you don't just like, you don't just get that. Right. You don't just like go and buy that. No, no. Right. Even if it's borrowed, I don't care. Like it fit. And not only did it fit, it worked. Right, right. No, I mean, it was, it was pretty damn close to perfection. Like, I mean, right. you know, it, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the hat and the makeup could have been a little different, you know, but uh, it's so nitpicky because that's the issue. It was so good. You right. know, it was just, it was amazing. So yeah. that was definitely mm-hmm. nerve. Um, and I already kind of, um, uh, oh, well, no, this is different. So this is Selena as titties. Her puff zip bagged jacket in this mm-hmm. last runway, I am sorry. I died the moment she turned the corner and I was like, what the fuck is going up in here in this good day? Like, what is she <laughs> serving? And she comes around the corner, is walking down, and I'm looking because there's so much to look at. I'm looking at every little clear bag that's got shit in it. And I thought it was all originally food, and then I realized, no, it's all, like, school supplies, and it's all sorts of stuff. And then she does the reveal that turned some of the girls off, that she lifts up the front and shows that she has Flaming Hot Cheetos in (laughs) her pouched zip panties. Panties, bitch. I was like... (laughs) This silly goose motherfucking queen, like, I am living for her in so many ways. Like, right, she like, is she is big. She is bold. She is camp. She is crazy. Right. And I'm like, I can't, I can't with her. And yet right. at the same time, I was like, talk about nerve. Right. And then, uh, spoiler, um, if you watch Untucked. There's a moment about the the flaming hot Cheeto in in the pussy pouch thing. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it at that. You gotta watch. <laughs> I just she crazy. She crazy. There's a part of me that wasn't the biggest fan of this, but more I think about it, I'm like, this all the the idea is genius. Well, and here's the thing: is I don't think you can for you can forget it. But once someone starts talking about it, I think it yeah. takes you immediately back. To that moment, like, right. this is going to be a, a really wild reference. It's like Sasha Velour and the Birdhouse. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you're just yeah. like, cuckoo, cuckoo, what the fuck is, like, you're just like, this is so, like, wacky, <laughs> wild, like, but are sort of artistic and different. And, yeah. like, and it is truly interpreted in her style. Right. And the thing I like the most about this, and, and this is going to be a little bit shady, so that's all. This was the most subdued, but still out there look she has worn. Mm. Her looks have been a little mm, um, and weeks, but this one I was like, I think some. I, like I think this. some you kind of go eh, like yeah. the traffic light right. like sign thing. I think a lot of people the were street, like the street sign. Right, thing right. right. They was, were like, was... well, and she was a lamp. Like yeah. her headpiece lit up. She was a fucking lamp. Like yeah. I was like, what? Okay. Um, Like, I don't know if I fully get it, but I get it. Like, I understand it. So I was like, all right. Like, but then anybody who apparently lives in L.A. immediately knew what she was doing. Like, the rest of the world kind of had to catch up and be like, okay, so she's a street sign, apparently, or street lamp or some shit. But this one, I think, was was much easier for people to pick up on and be like. Yeah. Like, there's a part of me that's like. Oh, this this is this 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 is an outfit you'll perform in a lot. Like you will you will do yeah. numbers in this. Like you will show up and you yeah. will like people want to see this. I would love it over and over if again. like depending on the number, like you had stuff. Like this would be a fun number to do. Um, Lizzo's where the hell's my phone? Because you got all these pockets. 
and you I'm got all th- this other stuff. But I'm also thinking, think of the different things you could put in there. Like, right. how wild do you want to get? Like, obviously, this is a problem. Don't do this, Selena. Not that you watch or listen to us. Because um, you don't want PETA on your ass. But you could put goldfish in one. Like, <laughs> I mean, you could do all sorts of wackadoo, <laughs> crazy ass motherfucking shit. Right. Like, you could, you could really kind of, like, make it wild. And if you go to a bear event, you could just fill the whole damn thing full of snacks. Um, you know, if you want to get super sloppy about it, you put some meatballs and some spaghetti in a pocket oh, as an homage oh to Willow. God. Like, I mean, you know, like you could, like, it is so, just yeah, weird. So, just so weird. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, I thought that was nerve. I just thought that was, that yes. was totally nerve. Are you ready to move on? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. All right, children's. It is time for snaps and eye rolls, the the hits and the misses, aka the highs and the lows of these particular mm-hmm. episodes. The things that stood out to us. So, uh, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? I'm going to give snaps to the old gays telling it like it is. Mm-hmm. So, in the I think the last episode, if I remember right, episode six, or was it episode? No, it was episode six. The, yeah, the work for, room. Um, old Friends Gold, which is the right. golden gays, golden girls, like kind of spoofy yeah. thing. Yeah. They had the old gays, the, which you, you know, if you follow social media, you've seen the videos of these four. They only had three on the show, but the four mm-hmm. um, older um, gay men, um, they're kind of like the Try Guys, but they're gay and do all these videos and fun stuff together we've seen them do drag we've seen them do um other things but um they were the pit crew mm-hmm. um which i kept saying to jim don't they i bet they cold af walking in that work room and just that like pink like thong um, yeah thong. well it wasn't a thong it was definitely like a speedo now yeah yeah um and the the the, the third one Mm-hmm. Not bad. Like he kind of has some muscle, and I'm like, okay. Oh, the one with the plantar fasciitis, like little yeah, anklet yeah. thing or whatever, which uh-huh. is so funny because so many people clocked it immediately, thought that he was like that he had like a a, a what you call it, like a, a house like monitor awesome. or whatever, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. And I'm like, I was like, that goes to show what you know. Uh-huh. Like if that's the first thing your mind goes to instead of oh, like where are you been? Right, right, right. My first thought was, oh, that sucks. Like that you had to yeah. go on set, you know, wearing, you know, an ankle support or whatever, because maybe your body falls apart when you get older. So mm-hmm. but I appreciate yeah. that they didn't shy away from that. Yeah. And just like they they kind of they had we found out in a tuck that they actually had like a like a little time they had they got they gave them robes and they had like this moment to just like sit and talk with the 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 girl. In the episode, we didn't get a whole lot. We got, like, a line from one of them, which I think kind of sucks. Because, again, editing, like, they – that's the part I really – I hate it so much. was, like, you take this time to make this bit, and you have the old guys show up, and then you give them a line, essentially. Um, Well, that's what we got to see. I was very pleased to get the untucked – exclusive right. mm-hmm. that we saw them in the director's chairs with the robes and that we got to know that they did stick around for for more time so right i, I Which, agree there's there's a lot on the cutting room floor probably we just didn't get yeah. and i the like the telling it like it is that's what i really enjoyed that they they had conversations with the queens they conversed with them and like you know you get the thing i love the most was like they're like you know hey we've been friends and your friends will be your your lifeline and and there's the thing that, that that brings them joy and having this discussion and being really real about it. You know, mm-hmm. um, they mentioned things about like, you know, the AIDS epidemic and how, you know, they've all made it through and having those, you know, having to deal with all of that. Cause we don't, you know, looking at the cast and I, I'd have to look again, you know, this is a young cast. Um, for the most part, yeah, because the oldest individual is 32? Right. No, sorry, 37. 
Yeah, Sasha. But not that you'd know it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, there are moments. But um, but again, like there's this you know, I know because I've, you know, we and Gary and I can kind of have to speak on this, like there's a an awe to your elders. There's a respect to your elders. But then, you know, nowadays we don't I don't think we have these conversations anymore. And especially for our communities, mm-hmm. I feel that they are important to mm-hmm. learn that history or know that history. And this is kind of the most most ways you're going to get it. Yeah, I mean, we come from generation of being taken under the wing of elders because, like, they've been through some shit, like, and mm-hmm. they fought for equity and and treatment and change, trying to change laws and that kind of stuff. And so, like, you you got taken into people's homes, you got mm-hmm. adopted, you became part of like families, not just drag families, but like just LGBT. Q families. And so a lot of that I think is not happening anymore because younger generations don't see the need or the mm-hmm. importance of that or, or they don't necessarily need that validation, especially if you move to a major area where there's a population density. If you're in a more right. rural area, I think you might have some of that um, knowledge. But right. Yeah. No, no, no. It, I'm glad that yeah. they were on. Yeah. I really did appreciate it. And I appreciate it that we got in untucked the larger conversation. Mm-hmm. Agreed. What about you? Um, well, I got two. So I'm giving snaps to what I call confident Mother Supreme Counselor Sasha Colby. <laughs> um, she really is delivering on many fronts. And the biggest one that it hit me hard this season was when Selena was in the bottom and she knew she was going to have to go lip sync. And... Um, For the first time in several years, I'm not doing what I used to do, which is I would pause right before they go to deliberate and then I'd watch on talk and then I'd go back to the live show, like try to see it in like live recording order as opposed to aired order. And right now I'm back to watching an aired order. And I really kind of wish I'd seen that because I think it would have affected me differently how Selena performed because Mm -hmm. she was really going through it um, back in the in the workroom. And Sasha knew she knows yeah. Selena. I'm not going to say they're super close, but they know each other from L.A. And Sasha was like, I don't think this was her motivation, but a small part of me was like, I feel like Sasha was like, not on my watch. Mm-hmm. No, no, ma'am. Like, you are my sister and I'm not watching you do this. You are not going to spiral and just like flounder and like, no, 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 we're, we're not having that. And so she went to go talk to her and she let her have a moment and Selena, you know, starts breaking down and she's like feeling overwhelmed and she just doesn't understand what's happening and she doesn't, you know, like feeling this way. And I loved so much that Sasha was so calm and is like, use that. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Use it. Take it in. Turn it out. Like. And I appreciated that she was just, you know, kind of being like a mother superior, kind of this like counselor role and was like, no, ma'am, like you're you're not going to you're not going to continue down. We're going to stop this right here, right now. And you're going to rechannel that energy and turn it into something. And I was like, that is part of part of why Sasha Colby is who Sasha Colby is like. Right. And. So I'll I'll make a I'll make a reference come back to this in a little bit about and a comment in a little bit about the importance of Sasha Colby being the way she is like I, I get that she's not everybody's cup of tea maybe for whatever reason um, but like this was one of those moments where I was like I'm sorry like she just she is delivering practically everything. And mm-hmm. and this moment of, of counseling and that kind of stuff I thought was really important. And she's been very good about, like, trying to mediate and help people, mm-hmm. like, you know, come to the middle of things and, and whatever. Yeah. Because she's, like, I think she's very much of – she hasn't said this, but it's, like, maybe – like, I've been here. I've seen it. I don't have time for the drama. Like, and, and she even referenced early in the season. She's, like, these children. You know? And, and so I appreciate that she's, like, trying to, I guess, be the adult in the room. Um, right. Because I think her eye is on the prize and she's like, I'm here to take the 200K and get the crown bitches. And that's just the end of it. Like, you know, and, and this is all just like sort of happening, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and then also I got to give snaps to Danny Trejo. Honestly, like that was crazy. 
Um, and I do want to <laughs> say this. This is not part of the snaps. Woo, boy. That sitcom, like, situation thing, that was bad. Like, I did not care for it. Like, I was like, this is hella awkward. Like, they made it even more awkward in the edit because the queens were predicting that their lines had something to do with, like, farts and things. So they were expecting certain stuff, and that wasn't the case, and it was very confusing because the ants were an issue. And, like, that was a whole thing in the beginning, and Spice was, like, stomping on ants and spraying them, and then, like, you know, the ant has, like, a throwaway line, and I was just like, okay, this is <laughs> this is getting weird. And then they did those, like, weird, like, chirpy cricket, like, silent moments, and I was okay. like, I was like, okay, Okay. Okay. I'm like y'all are like you're trying to fun, but this is this is bad. This is just bad. Not not this, not that funny. This was you have it right. The 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 mama. Oh, mama, this is garbage. Right. <laughs> so, um, this was garbage absolutely 100 percent. i don't understand what was going on i don't understand the connection between the daytona win one and daytona wins two other than the fact that it's the drag families kind of thing but you don't push that the first character we meet is the maid right and then say that she's not that funny Right. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and it just it just kind of was this weird thing. And, and then you had these moments where everyone would pause. Like you said, like there were these pause moments and there was the, we knew there was a laugh track like that. That's kind of the, you know, sitcom like trope thing right. of there being like a laugh track. But then there were moments where the laugh track would end and there would just be like silence. And like you had the crickets or you had like someone coughing or something like that. And I was just like. Were you trying to like put in this like play into this element of like maybe the the line wasn't funny, but it didn't really work because you laughed before it, and then like there was these like you said there were these pauses where I think they were thinking something was going to happen and it ended up not happening like the 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 farting or whatever like everyone had this thought of like I think they think I think the cast thought that there was going to be more sound effects and what have you going on and they didn't happen. Right. So again, none of this made sense. Which is why Danny Trejo as the surprise guest re coming back as Big Daddy was so bonkers because right. this, because up to that point it was bad. Mm-hmm. It was just bad and I was like I'm not enjoying this. I don't think it's that funny. I feel bad for these these poor girls like these queens are trying to do this thing and they're doing the best they can and they think they know what's going on and they're just being made to look foolish and the Dandre shows up and I was like wow. Okay, this is a whole different ball game and this is like kind of wild and it was like and I was like that was kind of the only redeeming part of the sitcom. I'm just saying So, for me, that okay, was sorry. that's all right. So that was there's, my my snaps. So that <laughs> being the case, eye rolls. Who you got? Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. Okay. Mm. Um, where are the wins? And what I mean is, um, this goes back to Sasha. Mm-hmm. I do not understand the past two winners. Mm -hmm. I don't get why out of the entire grouping for episode six, which was the gold, the golden gals one. How did aura win? You got me girl. You really got me because She's like apparently the best of the bunch in the heavy metal number. No, she wasn't. And apparently no. she had the best tie dye number on the stage. No, she didn't. No, she so didn't. right, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is this? I was like, it how felt, does she? It felt very. It just felt so like out of place and weird and awkward. And the only reason I can feel it being a thing was they were going to do this whole like she won and then she got kicked off. Spoiler alert. Too late. Mm. Right. Um, no, and and I agree with you. Like I was just like. 
But as someone said on another podcast recently, they were like, well, Sasha can't win every week. I mean, and I was fair. like, I was like, while that right, while that is fair, sorry, then don't fucking cast her. Right. Like if like, she's not if she's not the one that's gonna take the whole thing and prove it every single week so far, knock on right. you believe it. Uh, you know, like <laughs> like she's she's expected to be top four. Like she is she is killing it. Yes. She has been killing it. She's slayed every runway, she slayed every challenge, she has been doing consistently good. The fact that she was hold on. Pause one second. Because mm-hmm. I want to look at this because I have my notes. So she was in the top in episode six. Was she in the top in episode seven? No, she was safe episode seven. Mm, right. Right? Because she was in the back. Yeah. So, um, oh, and she was, she was safe. Nope. She was, uh, she was in the top lap in episode five. So it's kind of like, I get it that she can't win every time, but she's doing really well. And there, are, there, I'm seeing little to no faults. Now, I will give a little bit in this last, most recent episode, episode seven, because we didn't really get a lot of her. Mm. But I'll get to that in a second, because my next eye roll is for Robin's exit. So if you've been following along, Robin was... Um, um, kicked out of episode was not kicked out. Wow, uh, was eliminated in episode six. Why? Because she gave up. I don't think she gave up. I don't think she had the fight. Like I just, I, I, I and, and I realize that there was probably too harsh to say she gave up. She just, I hate to say it, she plateaued. She flatlined. Like she just maybe she's like, this is who I am, and I don't get out of this box, and I don't feel comfortable like going further with like you know doing or being more. And she kind of admitted that, and I was like, all right, girl. Well, no offense, yeah. you gotta go. Like that's no yeah. different than than Princess Poopy Pants over there being like, you know, <laughs> I'm good. Like I wasn't even sure I was gonna come back or whatever. And I was like, oh, write your own <laughs> oh, exit. Bye. Why don't you tell production yeah. you want to leave? And I think the same thing kind of happened with Robin, not as severe, but I think she but, was like, this is this is what I do, and the, and I don't go beyond that. And, and so I'm like. Well, but then I think you, my, you deserve my, the swift kick in the ass out the door. And I want to see my, you back in All-Stars when you get your shit together. And that's my thing. My main issue is her, the only time, and I will, I have to look through all the, all my notes, but I don't think this is ever, she's ever made it beyond safe until this last episode. Mm-hmm. So she has had no opportunities to hear any critiques or get any, you know, responses from the judges about like what we're seeing. And then suddenly in this episode, she's, in the bottom because we're not seeing we're not you you know, we're we're only kind of seeing the same thing but it felt really forced that felt forced to me because i don't we we've not again and uh, we've probably I've, I've seen this on on the twitters and what have you mm-hmm. Is it be is this something that we didn't see because of the edit? Like, was this like kind of doing the stuff that she's comfortable in, the safety moment? Was that and was that just something that we just didn't see? Because we haven't seen a lot of her. And right. that could also be, again, why she was why she was, you know, eliminated. She wasn't doing a lot. Right. We've 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 had it happen before. We've heard stories. We that's why the 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 T is that um, the reason um, Dax exclamation point and and oh her name just left my head oh her oh, name just left my head the other queen that she double eliminated with that's now um, makeup artist for uh, for Bob the Drag Queen Layla McQueen. Thank you. Woo. Mm. Um, that's why they were eliminated from their season was because they were not really speaking or talking a whole lot. They were keeping to themselves or not being very vocal. So they were eliminated because of this, like, 
you know, this whole thing about being entertaining and they weren't really entertaining. Well, I, I guess I'll phrase it this way. Well, I do like Robin as a, as a queen. I don't think she's that fierce because I don't think she lived up to her namesake because I think she was going to go in the middle of the pack no matter what. I mean, fair. I look at the I look at who's left and I immediately see one, two, three, four to be in the next four to be eliminated. Mm. Unless something changes, they're part of the next group that that has to go. And you and I know we've discussed this many times. You just kind of have to get through this stuff to you kind of get to the cream of the crop. Like you get to the top, you know, six or eight or whatever it is, you know. And and right now I'm like, "Mm, if Robin didn't go when she did, she was going to go within the next three weeks unless Mm -hmm. something magical happened. And I just wasn't seeing the magic. Yeah. I think there's a big there's a bigger part of me that feels like this is kind of why I'm giving eye rolls to it is because I felt like we didn't get an opportunity to really know much about them and then they're gone. Mm-hmm. And maybe this is production, maybe this is editing, whatever it is. We don't know because we don't know. I feel like it came out of nowhere. And that's sort of why I'm kind of giving it the guy rolls that I gave it. I think that's fair. I think you would feel that way no matter who it was if they were quote unquote quiet and then they mm-hmm. just got eliminated. Right. Like I, I think that's totally valid to be like you didn't give them a chance to have a microphone to have a platform or whatever so that we could get to know them and they're just gone. It's like, well. Yeah. There were, I think there were moments that they could have had these conversations that probably were, again, probably maybe removed. You know, we had Jax talking about how – you know, where she grew up, what she grew up in Connecticut, which is the same place that that Robin and them are from. Right. That she was kind of the only, you know, person of color at her school and all that stuff. And she had this that whole, you know, she was adopted and all of that stuff. And that kind of plays a very interesting role and in dynamic on how you, you know, experience things. Right. I it would have been wonderful to have had, you know, the other person of color from Connecticut that would have could have potentially spoke on her experiences to have spoken on her experiences. But we didn't get that. And I don't know why. But I'm curious, maybe it was there, but it wasn't put in because of this whole we need to keep things edited to 40 minutes or whatever. It could also be that her story was a lot like Jax's and there and it would be too difficult for the audience to differentiate. At which point I'm like, well, production, that's on you. You took four fucking queens from the same damn state in the same damn season. So, sorry. <laughs> just, just, just sorry, saying. not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, you had. <laughs> just flip the hair. Just... Yep. <laughs> So what about you? Well, speaking of uh, sorry, not sorry, uh, I got eye rolls for who I'm calling Mistress Shitster. Who are you talking about? I already said her name, Mistress Shitster. It's it's quite straightforward. Like, how much more do I, was, I need to say? I was I was joking. No, I know you were, but I was like, but I'm also kind of serious. Like, I'm over her. Uh, I'm 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 done. D O N E officially. Um, this, this is not fun. And, uh, you know, what bothers me the most that confounds me is how young she is. Right. She's reported to be 24, yet she acts like she's 42. And yet there are moments when she doesn't act like she's 42. Like she has the wisdom of 42 year old because she does shit like she just did in the, over the past like episode and a half. And it's like, so I kind of made comment in our CLL entourage chat about the fact that like, yes, it was bullying. Um, But here's the thing, like, I don't necessarily see Mistress bullying a whole lot, but she did at a certain point, but it's not what I think other people were thinking. So when they were in Untucked and Mistress is out on the stage and they're Mm -hmm. back in the workroom, Lux decides to bring up this thing. Malaysia's responding to her. And that's when Marsha opens her mouth and puts in both feet and (laughs) gets and, and unfortunately gets, you know, she does the wrong thing. Uh, Malaysia calls her out. Mm -hmm. And I was very proud of Malaysia for calling her out because she's like, no, you don't get to do that. You don't get to shut me down 
while I'm trying to explain myself and, you know, and going through and explaining my feelings as to why I'm upset about how things went earlier. Mm -hmm. And I was proud of Marsha that she learned now is not the time you in the wrong place, white girl, like you are between two women of color and they are saying some things and you need to shut the fuck up. And she did. So I was proud of that. (laughs) It is a fact. I was very proud of her in that moment that she didn't get stupid or try to keep talking. And she apologized. I was like, good, but let her get her shit out. But mm-hmm. that moment to me was on an unintended, unintentional bullying. And that's what I was responding to in the, in the entourage chat. So then we go to the beginning of the next episode, which is after everything's done. And then Mistress decides to shit stir and talk about stuff. And Malaysia's like, I'm not playing. I'm not talking. And then Mistress gets more ignorant about it. And I was getting irritated with her because she was saying shit. And she was like, she's like, oh, well, all right, fine. If you're going to be that way, yada, yada, like, have a good evening. Like, then she gets yeah. all super snitty. And then, and granted, it's the way right. they edited it, but she looked fucking ignorant as hell because then they caught her in confessional, whether it's this moment relevant or not, talking shit about how Sasha Colby got to be fucking Dumbledore or some shit and, like, turn everything right. into a learning moment. And that's when I was like, I'm done with you. Because you are too fucking immature to understand that your entire life is a learning moment, you dumb bitch. Like, I don't have time for you to be acting ignorant to your own sisters. And while this is television and this is production, there is a time and a place, and now is not the time nor the place. So, like, you can take your, your, your cattiness, your cuntiness, your whatever, because you make good television, but at least Silky Nutmeg Ganache had the good sense, like, of a religious background and faith and being, you know, uh, quote-unquote reverend to know when the time is the time and when to, like, apologize and to know things. And, baby, you don't. You right. just don't. Out. So, fucking lutely. Oh. I, ooh, hold on. <laughs> oh, this moment. Let me just, what the fuck did I write down? Yeah, I I am personally tired of the little birdie. Well, a little birdie, t- no, there ain't no little birdie. No, don't blame it on someone else. You heard this. You saw this. Not someone given to you unless it's protected, whatever. But again, like this is this is you pulling this out when it doesn't need to be pulled out. And I give all props to Miss to Malaysia. Yeah. For in that moment, just sitting there and not even not not even engaging, not even giving you a moment. Guess it eventually got to a point, but like she was she she was done. She wasn't going to rehash this. She didn't feel a need to rehash this. And right. she told you. I told everything to, to, to Lux. Right. I don't care that you weren't there. Right. That's not on me. She was a part of your group. Two of the other p- fucking people that were part of your group were sitting right there. Yeah. They were all a part of it. Yes, you were there too. But it wasn't just you, mistress. It wasn't just you causing the commotion and pull, the, putting this whole shit about like having this like well thing. and and that's the biggest thing that bothers me about all this is that mistress is inserting herself when she doesn't need to because the reality is if anybody is being the cunt in this whole thing it's lux it's the loud mouth way too self-confident like contestant who was the one that you go back and watch, she's the one that consistently was like, well, y'all better get used to country. Y'all need to know your thing. Like that, And, it, and at a certain point, it was sort of clap back. And then there was a point where I was like, not anymore, honey, because now mm. you're being ignorant. Like you're not even allowing the concept of mediating or coming to mm-hmm. the middle or mm-hmm. battling it out. Like that was uh-huh. not a discussion on the table. Nothing, And that is no- ignorant as fuck. There was no... Like I said earlier, there was no middle ground. There was no figuring out how to make this decision happen. There was none of this like we're gonna we're gonna do this. No, none of that was happening. You were literally like it's ours and no one else's, and you can't say anything or do anything to make that change our minds. Right. Like, but honey, this is that's not what this is. 
Right. That is that is that is again school kid bullying tactic. Yeah. It's just bad. It's just bad behavior. And it makes me not want to be interested in you, support you, watch you, whatever. And I, I, I appreciate it, Mistress. I love, I love her like makeup. I love the way she paints. She paints to the gods. It's amazing work. But I don't have time. I don't want this to be the representation of the big girl. I don't want this to 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 do what it's doing. And well, I because she's it. she's falling she's becoming the trope of the loudmouth big girl that like right. has to pick on other people. Right. Right. You're you're and you're being edited to be the mean girl because mm-hmm. you're letting them. Mhm. So and that's sort of my like biggest issue overall with that is that. Like I don't like this situation. And I get you've been like, you know, it's coming out now. You've been having issues with social medias and what have you. And I, I'm sorry that this is happening. I hate that it happens this way. And I hate the fandom that does this sometimes. This isn't the way to make it work. Mm-hmm. That's not how this that's not how this works. If you don't like a queen, don't like a queen. And guess what? If you don't like a queen because of what they did a year ago on TV that is now being shown to you, um, maybe just leave them the fuck alone. Maybe just, like, right, block just, them from your social media. Yeah, just don't, don't support them. Don't support them. The, like, <laughs> what, is, what is so hard about leaving someone the fuck alone? What, what is so hard about it? Yeah. Now, I said what I said. (laughs) But I'm sure y'all out there have some things that you want to say or you might want to comment and give us feedback. And there's plenty of ways you can do that. First of all, you can go to our website, which is CubsOutloud.com, and you can actually put a comment on one of our posts there. Or you can simply send us an email to CubsOutloud at gmail.com and comment on the the Drag Race, you know, series and and our discussions because we got spicy today, baby. Uh, You can also leave us a voicemail. You can call us at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Basically, any of the social media kind of outlet stuff, if you type in uh, Cubs Out Loud as one word, you should find us. If you want to join that Telegram chat I was talking about earlier, um, you should be able to go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram dash c-o-l-d-r. The events calendar should be tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen c-o-l. If you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. One of them is to go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, where you can get all sorts of different items of merchandise. For example, you could get a Cubs Out Loud Drag Race mug. Uh, you could also get various apparel items, like Damon is wearing the Consent is My Foreplay Drag Queen Pride uh, logo shirt that we have. We have our Cubs Out Loud Drag Race um, basic shirt uh, in variable colors and items. Um, we have all sorts of different items that you can support us there you can also become a patron you can go to patreon.com slash cubs out loud and for a dollar a month or more uh, you can be supportive of us and get behind the scenes um, different uh, pieces of stuff that we do including the before uh, and the post shows you can also go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud you can just make a one-time donation if you want to to help uh, keep the lights on as we like to Give say us a little tip there you Our go big tip Ooh, I love a big tip. Uh, you could also uh, pretty much find us anywhere that podcasts are available. The COL Drag Race has its own RSS feed, so that would be Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. You know the drill. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Our most bear-related sites are on the Facebooks. Or you can find me on Twitter as Pup underscore Umbra. That's definitely not safe for work um or you can find me as dma gamer 79 that's the more safe for work one <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gare bear 73 um i did create a specific twitter for all things that are drag which is g-a-r-b-e-a-r-7-3-d-r-a-g it just makes it easier so there aren't spoilers um 
for the most part. <laughs> Although there are some very handsome gentlemen I follow on Twitter uh, on the XXX profile that also like Drag Race, so I got to be a little careful about that because mm-hmm. they don't tag anybody; they just make comments, and I'm like, mm. I'm like, you're lucky, you're cute. <gasps> so. <laughs> With that being said, uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks to talk about the next couple of episodes when the cast gets reduced a few more and we get ever closer to those final laps. Yes. So with that, we will see you soon, children. Bye. Bye.